Hi everybody, this is Wendy Adler with Articulating Art Talks. I'm starting a new series of videos today. I'm calling it Art Bites, as in art in small doses. And I'm gonna focus on the public art that's in and around Houston. I chose to start here. I'm at Discovery Green, which is downtown by the Convention Center. There are several pieces we're gonna look at down here, but I wanted to start with this wonderful piece. This is called Monument du Fantôme, and it was by Jean Dubuffet. Jean Dubuffet was a French modernist painter and sculptor. He lived from 1901 to 1985. This particular sculpture sits right on Avenida des Americas, as you saw the car drive by, um, and it faces the convention center. It was originally done for Chase Plaza in New York City and was mounted there in 1972. But then it came to Houston once we decided to put Discovery Green in place and was donated here. Um, the original cost of this sculpture was $200,000, but now it's valued at well over $1 million. As you can tell, this is a very large sculpture. It's made of stainless steel uh, and painted fiberglass. It's in white, black, bright red, and bright blue. And it's actually a series of seven pieces that are grouped together. This was based on some red and blue ballpoint pen ink drawings that Dubuffet had seen. He did a whole series of works based on this kind of makeup, and the series was called the Hour Loop Cycle, H-O-U-R-L-O-U-P-E, which basically means circle of time. We actually have seven different forms here, and of the seven forms, each one is meant to represent a different item that you would see in a city. We have a church, we have a chimney, we have a mast, we have a dog, we have a hedge, we have the phantom for which it's named, and we have a tree. So as you were to look around each of the individual structures. You'd have to assign which one you think belongs to which object. I had a hard time putting them, putting name to object myself, but we'll take a closer look in a minute. Um, there are other pieces from this series. One is in New York, one is in Chicago, and there's another one in Europe. Um, and I think that the size and the scope of this particular piece really um, represents public art in Houston very well. So let's take a closer look now. So if I had to assign a structure to each of these individual forms, I think this one might be the dog. Um, I can see there's a tail here. It looks like maybe there's some spots for the legs, and I'm thinking that might be the head. Let's walk around and see if we can figure out which one is which. I would say that this one is most likely the chimney since we have the structure and we have what looks like smoke coming out of the top. Um, again, you can use your imagination with any or all of these, and certainly if I had you all with me, we would have a great discussion about what each of these would represent. But so far, I think we've got the dog and the chimney. If we continue this direction, I'm not sure what this is. Maybe it's the hedge? because I can't tell what else it would be. Or maybe it's the phantom. Nobody really knows what a phantom looks like, so that might be the phantom. I definitely think that this very, very tall one that you're gonna have a hard time seeing even to the top is the church. This one has to be the church, right? We have openings here that would allow for windows. There's entrances, which by the way, you are welcome to walk in and around. Um, but I think just the, the size of this one would dictate that this might be the church. And I think next to the church we have a mast. And I say that just because the mast is by far and away the tallest of the seven structures. Um, it doesn't have any openings for windows. It doesn't have any indication that anybody would be in it. So I would like to think that that would be the mast. I think if we come over to this side, Maybe this one is the phantom. This one seems to have some appendages up at the top that look like arms or multiple arms. Um, 
So maybe this one's the phantom instead of that small one over there, which I guess would make the small one over there the hedge. But again, it would be more fun to be having a discussion with y'all about this, right? And then I think lastly, if we come over here, we had our church, we had our hedge, we had our chimney, we had our dog, we had our phantom. This must be the tree. I think with the stem here and kind of the branchy looking things up at the top, this one must be the tree. Again, it would be more fun to be having that discussion with you, but I appreciate you taking a look. Let's move on to our next one. So I've moved across the park. I'm still in Discovery Green and I'm standing in front of Mystery, M-I-S-T-R-E-E, -E, kind of a clever name. And Mystery is a stainless steel fountain that was made by David Hollis. David Hollis is an American artist. He was born in 1948, still working today. A lot of what David Hollis does is actually sound sculpture, but in this particular case, we have a water sculpture. Um, if it was running, I wouldn't be standing here right now, but if it was running, you would see that the middle section of the sculpture would be a mist. So he has all these misters that feed towards the middle of the sculpture. And and around the outside perimeter, he has water spouts. So the outside is like a virtual rain and the inside is like a virtual cloud. So I'm sure it would be very beautiful if it was running, although I'm grateful it's not running right now. Now we're gonna see if we can find his other sculpture here in the park. So I found the listening vessels. Hello, hello, hello. These are two concrete parabolas uh, spaced 70 feet apart and designed as a listening tool. So you can sit in one and have your friend sit in the other and you can talk very softly and the friend will be able to hear you. So it's like a fancy game of telephone, you might recall when you were a kid. This is another piece of art done by the same artist that did Mystery, that beautiful stainless steel fountain that wasn't running. Um, as I said, he's interested in sound sculpture, and so he does a lot of these parabola structures. He also does aeolian harps, which is when you use the wind to create musical tones. Um, and he has those all over the country as well. So this is a beautiful setting here in Discovery Green. One of the other things that the park does is they have art carts that show up on the weekends. They have these carts that come and they have frisbees and balls and bats and sports equipment that you're able to borrow for free. I tried to find one to put on this video, but we couldn't find one today. I know that they at least have two. One has been decorated by a local high school. The other was decorated by the artist Mark Bradford, who is known for his art car parade entries. For those of you that have lived in Houston for a long time, Houston is also known for its art car parade every year. So we're gonna move on to one more structure here in Discovery Green. So I'm putting my cameraman through his paces today. We are now standing on the main green of Discovery Green. You have a beautiful view of the convention center over there. It's a perfect day in Houston. We don't have too many of those, but we got lucky today. And what he's showing you is the second half of a sculpture by Margot Sawyer. Margot Sawyer was a UT professor. She taught there for about 30 years and a Texas native. She also won the Guggenheim Fellowship in 2018, and she was instrumental in the planning of Discovery Green, so they asked her to create a sculpture for the park. So the one that was closer to the center um, uses a lot of blue tones, and then the one here behind me uses a lot of colorful reds and pinks and oranges. This is a very popular spot for photographs here in Discovery Green. It also serves a purpose and it conceals the stairwells at that end that that lead to the convention center. Let's move on. So on our way to our last piece I want to talk about, we had a beautiful view of the second half 
to the Margot Sawyer piece that we saw before with all those beautifully colored boxes. This is the second half of that piece. Uh, the piece as a whole is called Synchronicity of Color. And of course, this would be the half that focuses on those beautiful blue tones. Um, we've discovered how pretty Discovery Green is. We had never spent any time kind of wandering around here, but it really is a lovely place to come, whether you're looking for flowers or landscaping or just to be social or to look at the art. Now let's move on to our last piece. So our final piece here in Discovery Green that I wanted to emphasize is this piece here by Jim Dine. It's called The House, and then in parentheses it's called Heart. So you can definitely recognize that we're looking at a heart. Jim Dine was a pop artist. He's born in 1935, still alive today. Um, and he works with recognizable everyday items and figures and things that you can look at and understand. So we're looking at a heart here. It's been cast in bronze. This is one of three versions that he did. There's actually one at the Tate Museum in London. Um, and this was actually donated to the park by the children of Makanda O'Connor. And Makanda O'Connor was one of the founders and one of the people behind putting Discovery Green in place. So her children purchased this sculpture as a memoriam to her. I'm standing in an area that I think is referred to as Makanda Park. So this Jim Dine sculpture made of bronze, lovely heart. A lot of people like to come have their pictures taken here. If you look up closely, you can see things like an ax or hammers uh, embedded in the bronze. That's a very typical thing for a Jim Dine sculpture. As I said, he takes everyday objects and he works them into his sculptures. My interpretation of this particular one, especially since it's called the house, is talking about the fact that a house is something that's made using tools and that it contains love, which would represent the heart. So that's how I would interpret this piece, but you might have your own interpretation. Thank you so much for joining me on our tour of Discovery Green. Look for other art bites coming up soon. I'm going to highlight other public art locations throughout our great city and send me your emails and comments. Take care. Bye-bye.